Today in Detroit, the doctor listened as some of these patients and their families told in court how he ruined their lives with unnecessary cancer treatments. Here's Dean Reynolds. Courtroom sketches could not adequately capture the anguish of the victims today as one by one they confronted the cancer doctor who prescribed aggressive chemotherapy for patients he knew were not ill and for those who were ordering treatments that were excessive while billing Medicare $34 million. In court, Dr. Fareed Fada showed no emotion for a man who prosecutors said would bully and browbeat patients who dared to question his treatment. Fata has already pleaded guilty to fraud and other charges. A memo from prosecutors demanding a life sentence said Fata would tell his patients they risked death without him, telling one, quote, your life or your money. From Laura Stetfeld, whose father died in Fata's care, you poisoned, tortured, and murdered my dad. From Maggie Dorsey, even though I am not dead, I am a shadow of my former self. It went on for four hours in federal court in Detroit, and it involved only a handful of the 553 victims prosecutors identified, people who were physically, emotionally, and financially devastated. Expert witnesses took the stand to describe the overuse of chemotherapy. One drug, rituximab, is typically given eight times for aggressive lymphoma, but Dr. Fata prescribed it to one patient 94 times. Monica Flagg, who was falsely told by Fata she had multiple myeloma, was too distraught to speak in court. Treatments Fata prescribed left her continually exhausted and in pain. What do you think of him? What do I think of him? I'm very angry. I cannot believe any doctor would, would betray so many people. And he did. You saw him in court. I did. I cried when I first saw him walk in the door. Did you see a man who was contrite? He showed no emotion. He, he didn't care. How does that make you feel? Oh, oh, I was very angry. A good question is how he got away with this, and Scott, the answer is that Dr. Fata was a well-respected physician backed up by other well-respected physicians and a prominent local hospital. But it was a doctor who worked for him who ultimately blew the whistle on his actions. And prosecutors are asking for a 175-year sentence. Dean Reynolds covering the story in Detroit.